Hi, this is Bill here at Power Stroke Specialty, PowerStrokeHelp.com. Today I want to talk to you about some disturbing things that we're finding on the 6.4 liter. Uh, behind me I have a 220,000, I think it's 221,000 mile uh, 6.4 liter uh, F250. Truck has been meticulously cared for. It's owned by a military guy. Uh, it takes uh, absolutely perfect care of the truck with the, uh, with the fluids and filters and all this sort of thing. Um, we had put a set of rocker arms on the truck, uh, is, is what happens with a 6.4, the rocker arm tips will wear out and immediately the truck went to skipping. Uh, so we took the rocker arms off in the initial repair and you see that's typical like a, like a 6.4 where the, where the tip is wore out and you know they're, they're all the way through, there's some of them that are still working a little bit and replaced them with brand new ones, like you know, that are, that are rotating like they should, operating correctly. And at that point, the motor, uh, the motor started to skip very shortly after that, and we couldn't figure out what it was, so we uh, unfortunately had to remove the cylinder heads from the truck. The worst cylinder uh, for compression was number 7, which is the rearmost cylinder on the passenger side. And when we took it apart, we uh, had one of the intake valves that was completely... The guides are so blown in this, in this one cylinder on the intakes that it's just it's absolutely uh, not going to seal correctly because now that we've uh, we've gone and we've put the new rocker arms on now it's changed the geometry of it and now this this valve isn't sealing correctly all the rest of the valves are just as bad but this one's actually the worst one that's just insane I mean I have never seen a valve guide in all the years of working with cars and trucks and boats and motorcycles and everything else I have never seen a valve guide we're out like this, and this goes back to why we produce the big dog diesel cylinder heads. Uh, the big dog cylinder head puts in a bronze guide where the, where the, the valve actually rides against uh, a bronze and not steel. We can't even pull this, this valve out because there's a lip worn into the thing uh, at the top end. You know, valve guides don't work uh, steel to steel. Uh, that's, they figured that out way back in the 30s and 20s. Uh, you know, even Henry Ford and his Model T's and A's were putting bronze guides in. You know, why the hell did International choose to do this? They did it to cut costs. Uh, and unfortunately, it shortens the life of the engine to, uh, it seems that what we're seeing here is to about 200,000 miles. Okay, this is where the big dog cylinder heads come into play. Because these heads are built correctly with bronze guides, new valves. My big dog cylinder heads have the o-ring around the edges of the combustion part of the head gasket to seal in the compression. That's the key to making head gaskets stay on a 6.4 and a 6.0 head. But these valve guides, because they have the bronze liner in it, two, three, four, five hundred thousand miles from now will not look like those ones that you just saw. Ford's only going to sell you the same thing you got on there, so you can expect in a couple hundred thousand miles to have to tear down the motor and do it again. My head solved that problem. Look at there. Isn't that pretty? There's just something about fresh machine work that makes me happy. Especially when it's done right and it's not some hack job crap like you see out there all the time. One of the other things I found out about a 6.4 that I don't like uh, and when we're rebuilding them is that the connecting rods are not rebuildable. Uh, on our left here we have a 6.0 connecting rod and if you notice there's a bronze uh, liner here that actually the, the wrist pin rides on. Well, the 6.4 connecting rod, which is you know very similar, beefy looking sucker, uh, and this particular one's got a little bend in it, has no, uh, again, we're back to steel to steel. It's, uh, it has no uh, bronze liner on it, so the wrist pin up by the piston rides directly on steel. That's just that's a real serious problem because it shortens the life of the motor. That's why you hear some of the older 6.4s, high mile ones, they are actually sound like they're rattling simply because the wrist pin on the end of the connecting rod is loose and making extra noise. Over here on my pile is a, a couple of uh, 6.4 um, crankshafts that are unusable. Uh, if you, and, you know, they're actually in pretty good shape. They're not beat up in the, in, the, in the journals here. But what's happened is, is because of all the power that people are running through this engine, it actually bends the crankshaft. In other words, if you take this crankshaft and you support it 
on this bearing and the rear bearing and you spin the crankshaft, you'll actually be out here 5, 10, 12, 15 thousandths. In other words, there's run out in the middle of the shaft from the shaft being bent. This particular problem combined with a bad front cover and all, all, the, all the difficulties of getting parts of rebuilding 6 force, we have gone to just buying complete short blocks from Ford which essentially takes any sort of engine building profit right out of our pocket as rebuilders. Now this engine, because the man who owns it has taken very good care of it, uh, everything else looks really good on it. I mean, I I'm, I'm, haven't pulled the pistons out to see if there's any wear uh, at the connecting rod, but there was no real rattle in this engine. The noise was all in the rocker arms, which was typical. But we're going to go ahead and uh, change the uh, oil cooler. We're going to put a set of big dog cylinder heads on it. So on this particular truck now, I got to call a customer back and say and, and go from you know just a couple thousand dollars with of the uh, your repair. Now all of a sudden we've gone to a whole bunch more money. Okay, we're talking remanufactured cylinder heads, we're talking head studs, we're talking a, a bulletproof now, and we got to put an oil cooler on it, and we're have to go through the fuel system and put all new gaskets on that. I mean, this is an extremely expensive engine to repair. Now see what my problem is is that the manufacturing processes of international. Not Ford Motor Company, but International, who they bought these motors from, was cost cutting and cutting corners. That is just absolutely abominable that at 220,000 miles that the valve guides look like that. It's wrong. Big dog cylinder heads, they solved this problem. And this is not the type of work that I'd allow to go outside of my shop.